So Futera for the last 17 years has had a very strong belief that the best way to change the world is to imagine a better one. So, so much of the messaging around environment, social issues, health issues about trying to minimize the bad. And actually, that can feel quite hard to do. It can be exhausting. It can be very negative. And so our philosophy is, no, think about the positive. Think about the vision of the world that we want to live in. And that, that we found that optimism and that positivity we found is a much better way to motivate individuals individuals, consumers, citizens, a better way to motivate business leaders and even a better way to motivate governments is to try to think about the world we want rather than the problems we're trying to avoid. Great. So over many years of working with large businesses and with NGOs and with governments to try to bring about positive change, we've learnt a few things. And the number one thing we've learnt is the need to put logic and magic together. So in the Futera theory of change, there's four aspects, two of them logical and two of them around magic. So the two logical one is number one, vision. As I just talked about, this need to have a clearly articulated vision of where you're trying to get to. That might be a corporate purpose, it might be a big goal, it might be a big promise that you're making to the outside world of what you're trying to achieve. And that vision is almost sort of like the flag waving at the front of your army. But then you need a map. So the second part of our theory of change is underneath visions is maps. You actually need a plan for how to get there. The tactics, the policies, the targets, the infrastructure of change. That's what most of us do every day. Now, if you only have a map, if you only have a whole set of actions you're going to take without a vision, how do you know what they're going to live up to? But if you only have a vision without a map, then you're not going to do anything. So that's the logical side. On the magical side, you need symbols. You need really clear messages, brands, very simple semiotics, even a logo or a picture, a way for someone to actually remember all that complicated logical stuff. And you need stories. You need the compelling, emotional, right brain, creative messaging and marketing to get people. Now, in most businesses, these are all separate. So maybe the CEO might set the vision, the sustainability director and the commercial and operational teams might work on the maps, the brand team would work on the symbols and the advertising and marketing team would work on the stories. And if you're doing just normal business, that's okay. When it comes to sustainability, you have to do all of this at once. And so inside Futera, we have great experts on the sustainability issues, on strategies, on target settings, even on the science. And we have graphic designers and storytellers and marketeers on the creative and they're all having to learn how to work together because when it comes to positive change, you need the magic and the logic. So fast moving consumer goods companies looking to pay their part need to remember the first part, the fast moving. Now, Actually, many consumer goods companies are quite slow moving. They are slow to change, they are slow to respond. It's incredibly risky to do something different this year than you did last year. And actually that is no longer the case when it comes to social issues, environmental issues, health issues and safety issues. We need to be really responsive. So the number one message we've come here to the Consumer Goods Forum with is to start thinking about products as if they were people. How can your product embody the honesty that a person would have in their interactions with each other? So to stop this top-down product and then people here and start realizing that actually your product is a peer of your consumers. How does an individual, how does a person embody honesty? They're clear about their intentions, they admit where there's mistakes, they take risks and they're vulnerable. These are not terms that we're used to using around our product. But the small startup challenger brands, the ones that are seeing such incredible growth right now, these are the companies that have understand this very modern way of engaging with consumers. And for most large brands, it's death by a thousand cuts right now from those small guys. So don't just look at the kooky marketing. Don't just look at the fun messaging. Actually look at these very human values that these small brands embody. 
So the CGF is pivotal to bringing together the, the manufacturers, the brands and the retailers because that dynamic is very special and very unusual. Usually, most of our experience is that the manufacturers and the retailers are in a semi-competitive environment. It's very financial, it's very commercial. But actually what the CGF does is it gives us space to say, guys, we're the people who touch the consumer. We are the people who she interacts with every every day and actually she sees this as one thing she doesn't see retailers and brands as different this for her is shopping so how can the shopping experience the products that we buy in the places that we buy them work together to help the consumer live a more sustainable life and I think that's the absolute core role of the CGF is reminding all of us that we are in service of her life of her her hopes her challenges the way that she wants the world to be how she wants to see other people treated and what I've experienced here at the CGF is a lot of very open very honest conversation between organizations that otherwise would be in a competitive environment to try to think how to better serve the future of the consumer and what she wants from the world One of the most favourite results from our work on the, uh, the Honest Product Guide was looking at uh, whether we as industry, so members of the CGF and also members of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, think that consumers are satisfied with transparency. And over 80% of the members of the, con of the CGF and the Chartered Institute of Marketing think consumers are generally satisfied. We then went and asked consumers, Turns out not quite the case. Actually, well over 50% of them are not satisfied with the information that they're getting on social, environmental, um, health and safety issues. This is one of the big learnings. And then we've done a really big deep dive into what consumers think, into what the industry thinks, and some breakthrough ideas around how we could change this. So two of the things that I would really encourage people to look at is the honest product test, the seven ways in which the new breakthrough brands are being honest with with consumers and the honest product journey so the different stages that companies are going through towards honesty and the really big gap that there is between current practice and the future Transparency and collaboration go together very, very closely. In fact, it's very difficult to be transparent without collaboration, from collaboration with your suppliers to collaboration with consumers, with other brands in order to create ways to be transparent together. So these aspects come together absolutely. I also think that transparency and collaboration are two of the bedrocks of future business. And again, we're seeing this significantly in the entrepreneurial sector. So everything that the CGF can do to encourage greater transparency transparency or in our language greater honesty and more collaboration perhaps more friendliness <laughs> so transparency and collaboration or honesty and friendliness is only going to be a good thing for every company involved in the CGF.